Hey everyone, welcome to Talk Audio. This is the second lecture in our lecture series on instrumentation systems. In the previous video, we introduced ourselves to the very basics of the concept of measurement. Continuing from that lecture, we will study about the different methods we use for measurements in this video. We will see that the act of measurement is broadly classified into two types, direct and indirect measurement. Of this, the direct measurement is again classified into deflection method and comparison method. Again, the comparison method can be classified into differential method and null method. Okay, that's enough introduction and let's start our lecture. The measurement of a given quantity is an essential act of comparison between an unknown quantity and a predefined standard. As science and technology progressed, new phenomena and relationships were discovered and the techniques used for measurement also progressed parallelly. So these techniques or methods of measurement may be broadly classified into two categories, direct measurement and indirect measurement. First, let us see what is direct measurement and then discuss the classes under it. In direct method, the value of the unknown quantity is obtained directly by using measuring instruments. The best example of this is measuring the length of an object by using a graduated scale. Another example is a simple thermometer that measures the temperature. As you can see, it is the simplest method of measurement as it involves no calculations to arrive at the result. That is, you can simply read out the results from the scale. But at the same time, direct method of measurement is not very accurate because it depends on the human insensitiveness in making judgment. For instance, a person can accidentally read the result as 7 cm when the actual result was 6 cm and this will cause an error. Okay. Another disadvantage of this method is that the measurement range is limited. Consider the case of measuring length. If it is 1 or 2 meters, we can easily measure it using a measuring tape. But it will be very impractical to measure 50 to 100 meters using a measuring tape. Right? Okay. Now going to the types of direct method. We have deflection method and comparison method. Remember the potentiometer experiment we did in high school. There, we were measuring the EMF of an unknown cell by comparing it with a standard cell. The standard cell was usually a Daniel cell connected across PQ and we slide the jockey along the potentiometer wire and obtain the length between the null point and point A of the potentiometer. Similarly, we do for the cell whose EMF is unknown and finally, the EMF of the cell is obtained as a function of the EMF of our standard cell. This is an example of comparison method of measurement. So, in comparison method, the unknown quantity is compared with the known value of some quantity. This measurement by comparison can be of two types, null type and differential type. An example of a null method of measurement is a weighing scale. Uh, not this type, the classical type. Yeah, this one. Here, at one end we place the unknown weight. And on the other end, we keep on adding weights until the standard weights nullify the effect of unknown weight and thus the weight of the object is measured. So you can see that the action of the unknown quantity upon the instrument is reduced to zero by the counteraction of the known quantity of same kind. Another example of null method is measurement of resistance using Wheatstone switch. For instance, if you are asked to find the resistance R1, we will keep on adjusting the resistances R2, R3 and R4 such that the current through the galvanometer is zero and thereby find the resistance of R1. So effectively we are nullifying the current through the galvanometer and therefore this method is null method. Now the next subclass is differential method of measurement. An example is a differential YouTube manometer which is used to measure the pressure of fluids. So here the difference between a non-physical quantity and the unknown physical quantity that is being measured is established. For instance, in the case of our manometer, if we know the pressure at one end, we can calculate the difference in pressures at both ends using the formula delta P equal to rho GH, where rho is the density of the manometric fluid, G is the gravitational constant and H is indicated in the figure. So if the pressure at this end is PA, the pressure at the other end, Pb can be calculated as Pb is equal to Pa minus rho gh. In case if you didn't understand these equations, it is totally okay as we are learning it in a later lecture. Now the next type is deflection method of measurement. 
Here, the value of the unknown quantity is indicated by the deflection of a pointer on a calibrated scale. Some examples are ammeters, voltmeters, wattmeters, etc. Since this method of measurement is self-explanatory, I am not going into the details of it. Okay. Okay, so far we discussed all the methods of measurement that comes under the direct measurement. Now we have the indirect measurement. This method is used in places where direct measurement of the unknown quantity is not possible. Here, several parameters of the unknown quantity are measured directly and then the value is determined using mathematical relations. In other words, we are indirectly measuring the quantity. An example is the measurement of resistance of a conductor. Here, let us say we are measuring the resistance of this blue conductor. We cannot directly measure the resistance. To measure the resistance, what we are doing is, we measure the current through the conductor using an ammeter connected in series. Also, we measure the voltage across the conductor using a voltmeter. So, we got the voltage readings from the voltmeter and the current reading from the ammeter. Then, we use the Ohm's law, V equal to IR or R equal to V by I to calculate the resistance of the conductor. Usually we take multiple readings, calculate the resistance for each case and take the average value to increase accuracy. So in a nutshell, we are measuring the voltage across the conductor and current through the conductor which are parameters of the conductor functionally related to the resistance. And then we are using the mathematical relationship of Ohm's law to calculate the value of resistance. So that's all for this lecture. To summarize, we learned that there are mainly two methods of measurement direct measurement and indirect measurement. Of this, we had seen that the direct measurement again has many subclasses and we studied each of these subclasses in detail. In the next video, we will learn about the classification of instruments. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.